a radical, an educator, someone that's deeply invested in a holistic, purposeful way that education can transform lives. Right here in the place we are, please join me in welcoming Principal Bomani. Salam alaikum, everyone. So when I first started teaching, um, I was younger and thinner. Someone told me that the best thing to do is to tell a story. So I'm going to try to share two stories with you if I have time. The first story is about a young man named Ronald Hart. Ronald grew up in New York City, was in the New York City school system. But like a lot of his friends, Ronald felt alienated by the school system. At fourth grade, or in the fourth grade, he sat and listened to a teacher tell his mother he would never read above grade level. In the sixth grade, he stood outside crying while a teacher pinched him and slapped him repeatedly. By the time Ronald got to high school, he had said to hell with school. But Ronald was lucky because he had a lot of teachers. He learned about the bicentennial, and he learned about Johannesburg from Gil Scott Heron. He learned that he should never use the word nigger, and that black people could smile through their pain from Richard Pryor. Those teachers were joined by James Baldwin, Richard Wright, Sonia Sanchez, and a whole host of others, including Robert Nesta Marley, who told him to grow locks and be a buffalo soldier. <laughs> In 2014, Ronald was blessed with opening up a school, but by then he had changed his name. His new name was Tabari Zaid Bomani. <laughs> and in 2014, uh, I was part of a group called the Expanded Success Initiative New School Design. And our charge was to open up new schools that can truly educate African and Latino youth to be thinkers, that could build schools that were culturally relevant and to tell students that their legacy, their responsibility was to social justice. And more importantly, to create a school where they could be loved. Because there is no revolution without love. So Nelson Mandela School for Social Justice is part of this expanded success new school design. There are two other schools in Queens called Epic North and Epic South, and we show up every day to try to do this work because we believe in it. And I want to, if I got some time, tell you the second story. The second story is a little bit more personal for me. I have two absolutely wonderful daughters that I adore. And I'm the kind of parent that, you know, at when they were in fourth and fifth grade, I would show them Black Panther videos because I'm actually that dude. <laughs> and both of my daughters are amazing. And in fifth grade, my uh, oldest daughter, Anissa, started writing poetry. Now, I've been a poet. I've performed poetry. I've written poetry. I was totally over the hill in, with joy. And so one day, we're sitting and watching a Black Panther documentary. And yep, I am that dude. <laughs> and my daughter, who had just started really writing poetry, she looked up to me and said, Dad, why aren't those organizations around today? And so there's a lot I could tell her. I could talk to her about COINTELPRO. I can talk to her about the fallacy of assimilation and acculturation. I can tell her about all the isms and schisms that destroyed the, the progressive movement from that time period to now. Or tell her there are people still in the streets doing the work. It's just that the newspapers don't report it. But I thought about her being a poet. And I thought about her asking the question. And all I did was I looked at her and I said, baby, they're waiting for you. So on behalf of Nelson Mandela School for Social Justice, on behalf of 
boys and girls and Principal Dr. Wilshire on behalf of Research and Service and their amazing principal, Ms. Farrington. I want to welcome you to our creative time. I want to welcome you to the time period that we can have to be creative and to think about how do we create a generation of poets who are warriors and warriors who are painters and painters who are social activists. Because here's what I know. I walk up three flights of stairs every day, painfully. <laughs> and in the morning, we have a libation circle where young people get together in the hallway, and we pour out libations to the ancestors, and we do a call and response because they cannot start school until they start their soul. I know that we teach them words like Ubuntu because we can't be called Nelson Mandela and not share the beauty of South African humanism. Like we want them to know who the Tosa are and what they created before they were enslaved in their home. And I know our kids show up every day with all the issues of this society in their pockets, with all the pain of their households in their hearts but with beautiful minds ready for us to help them. And I tell teachers, we're not teaching them, we are helping them teach themselves. We are guiding them through the process because we love them and the process. And so I know they're ready, they're willing, they're here. We just gotta give them their creative time. So I welcome you, I thank you. We're like a salam.